April. Oh. Uh, all right, this is something we're, I'm going to go back and check because it seems to me we had a public meeting um, prior to April of 2015. And those minutes should be there because in December of uh, 2015, again, by my recollection, is we approved the minutes from the previous public meetings. So they, okay. sh they should be posted on the website. <clears throat> if they're not, can you just make an effort to get minutes Absolutely. out immediately just so people, look, we don't want to give people more fuel to feel like they're being, you know, not being heard, right? So if we can get those minutes out there, that would be great. Um, on the, uh, let's see, my next question here. So you went to a, uh, you attended the 50th anniversary, and you mentioned this in your opening comments, uh, 50th anniversary of the celebration of the UFW, and I think the 50th anniversary, that should be celebrated, but for a board member who is unbiased and looks at all cases the same, um, I just, you want to be careful, and I know I've seen you at agricultural events as well. Now they've been smaller, they haven't been the 50th anniversary type things, it's just been a dinner, but um, do you feel like you go to all things equally? Do you go to UFW, do you go to the Farm Bureau, do you go to uh, different uh, industry events as well? I do, Senator, uh, and, and I really work to make myself accessible to all. There are more grower associations, so I, end up going to more grower uh, activities. Okay. Okay, those are my questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Vice Chair. Uh, Ms. Mitchell. Thank you very much. This has been a fascinating um, discussion thus far, sir. Um, if I could ask a question of um, the secretary of the committee or anyone who could tell me the date that Ms. I focus on her lovely first name so much. Sharoma? Ms. Sharoma, when it was public that today would be her confirmation hearing. Do we know the date that, this, that, that, that she was listed in the file, that she would be confirmed today? About two weeks, okay. I ask that because I don't find it helpful as a sitting member of the Rules Committee to walk in and receive an eight-page letter of opposition on the desk. Which letter are you referring to? Uh, the Raimundo and Associates Law Corporation, okay. dated June 20th, date stamp June 20th, received by Senate Rules Committee. And today's it's an eight day. page, it's, day. okay. you know, pretty dense. Uh, and as a sitting member of Rules Committee, I, it's, my, it's our collective obligation to weigh all information. I heard my colleagues say that this was the one appointee with the most opposition he's, he's seen in nine years. It hasn't been mine even as a city member of rules committee. I had one letter that was received Friday at 2 p.m. prior to walking in today. So to receive the Raimundo letter today, eight page long, I saw the, the individual, but in terms of written communication mm -hmm. as a member, I got um, the letter from Western Grower. So I just wanted to be clear, it wasn't just me that she was on file for a, a, a respectable amount of time for um, opposition to have communicated. Um, with that, let me talk a little bit about, I appreciate having the that. conversation with you. I do want to ask you, having done my speed reading on the eight-page letter, um, uh, the first page or two references the state's audit, the 2015 audit mm -hmm. from the Department of Finance, and it identifies significant weaknesses um, preventing the ALRB from producing reliable workload and financial data some of which was attributed to the time during which you were chairperson. Could you, could you just respond in general to the audit, uh, your perception and, and plans for corrective action, just to educate us all? Yes, uh, Senator, and um, you know, I haven't seen that letter either, but that's okay, that's okay. Uh, yes, the, um, uh, the OSA audit uh, pointed out a number of things uh, that have been addressed in terms of uh, the financial record retention, uh, the um, uh, filling of vacancies, mm -hmm. uh, the tracking of workload, uh, mm -hmm. and um, we I would guesstimate that we are probably 80% uh, com complete in finishing up all of these different things, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we're, we're, we're in good shape. On that, and yes. and I know the board isn't at its capacity. It's five members. You've been operating with three for how yes. long? Uh, I'm 
probably since the Governor Schwarzenegger administration. Yeah. yeah. So do you attribute yeah. any of the shortcomings identified in the audit to operating without a full um, board? Uh, I would not, but rather okay. that we did have some transition with some seasoned staff uh, retiring. Uh, we uh, have worked to make sure that we've got those um, work manuals at everyone's desks so, and they know all the requirements, DGS and so forth. Thank you. Another question referencing what I read in the Raimundo letter. Um, since you didn't see it, I will just reference the actual language in the letter. Colleagues, it's the bottom of page five. And it goes back to the issue already raised with regard to your relationship with a local um, consultant. Um, it says that uh, you have political ties to the union. Richie Ross has acted directly as advisor, consultant, lobbyist, and paid representative to United Farm Workers for many years. His experience with the UFW includes advising the organization in matters directly involving a LRB. Mr. Ross has also had an ongoing close business relationship with the chairwoman for a period of more than a decade, a relationship that Sharoma has curiously failed to disclose throughout her term of office while she quietly set the stage to protect the UFW. Um, I'm clear that your direct business relationship with him was as your consultant when you ran for another board. Uh, for the SMUD board, the which SMUD I board. still yes, serve on, yes. And, mm -hmm. um, as, and, and that was as a part of your candidacy for the board. Yes, that's right, as part and of my so candidacy. And so do you have the same reporting requirements as we do for financial contributions received or payments made I do to indeed. consultants? I do indeed. And, and so uh, did you yes. report uh, at that point in yes. those campaign documents your payment to Mr. Ross? Yes, ma'am. So this has curiously failed to disclose all That's disclosed, not true. all disclosed, uh, met all deadlines, all FPPC, Secretary of State, uh, and um, uh, I'm not sure if Mr. Raimundo has uh, divulged that he represents the desert petitioner in the Growen case. Uh, yes, and, he, he and, acknowledges that in the opening right, sentence. Yes. And that brought he up uh, and filed on her behalf mm -hmm. uh, the petition that. Uh, was dealt with uh, in our published decision, which is on our website and goes through each uh, of the, well, all the various um, I don't know, uh, allegations, what have you. Okay, but you, but you did file yeah, I your did campaign file. reports, Absolutely. payments made to Mr. Ross. Absolutely, okay, all filed. Okay, another quick question. Uh, again, referencing the letter, the final page, Sharoma's one-sided political support indicates a blatant predisposition favoring her political allies in any matter where the UFW is before the ALRB and a disregard for the ethical rules that bind her. Could you talk to me about the ethical standards and expectations of an ALRB member? Yes. And I don't know if this is ethical rules in the generic terms, like we should treat others as we want to be treated, or if these are ethical rules that are documented in a governed document that govern you? There are uh, laws that apply to me mm -hmm. and uh, laws that require ethics training every two years uh, uh, that um, conflict occurs when there is an economic conflict. If I benefit financially on something, here I have had no financial benefit. There is no financial interest. Mm -hmm. uh, all paperwork uh, filed, um, and uh, you know, in these, some of these materials, uh, talking about uh, my political donations, those are allowed mm -hmm. by law, mm -hmm. uh, and it is part of my belief in public service that when there is someone who uh, is running for office that I think is going to do a good job. I have donated. Mm -hmm. I have donated to things like Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. I, you, my resume, you see. Um, which which is your fundamental right. Yeah. I, I would say as, as we continue to talk about the correlation and relationships, it, 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 it's you know, the kind of conversation as a city member of the legislature um, that, I, that I personally take offense to. Uh, in the Western Growers letter, the, the, the notion that Mr. Ross's connections with the UFW are long-standing and well-known, as is his influence in the legislature. Um, well, you know, as we all are well aware, um, any number of special interests 
have uh, a role to play to represent their special interests before the legislature. And um, I find it very ironic that a letter written on the Western Growers letterhead um, suggests that while we certainly know that the Western Growers have played a very strong active role in supporting candidates, city members opposing candidates, contributed dollars to independent expenditure, exp independent expenditure committees. So it feels a little like throwing uh, rocks at glass houses to suggest that uh, one consultant outweighs the um, amazing um, power that the Western growers have um, over the political process in this legislature. I think finally I would just say this whole notion of an expectation of a of balance in your rulings is, is curious to me because as I read the role and responsibility of the ALRB, it's adjudicating according to the law. Yes, ma'am. And while we can certainly track what those rulings are, do you feel as a city member of the board that we should have an expectation of equality in terms of your rulings? And, and that, thank you, Senator. That, and that was um, the, port, the point that I was perhaps inartfully making earlier, is that <clears throat> the expectation is that each case, whatever that case involves, will be judged by the evidence, the law, what past case law has said uh, in terms of how to rule uh, in, in, under the, such uh, findings of fact and scenarios, uh, and, and that the board shall be uh, that neutral arbitrator in taking all of that based on an administrative law judge's decision uh, based on case law and then issue a decision. Uh, so that's the caution that I was making about mm -hmm. uh, uh, statistics, although in respect to the vice chair, uh, we'll follow up on that. Uh, and in the end, it's the published decision that for each case must be rule of law. And so the laws that you adjudicate in accordance to are laws based on case law, laws yes, passed by this legislature. Right. Yes, that's right. It starts with the statute itself, which is patterned after the National Act. Uh, and then with that, the case law, we are now 41 years old in terms of case law for the State Act, 80 years plus for the National Labor Relations <coughs> Act, uh, and uh, the uh, unique facts of each case, sometimes not so unique. Uh, we see you know, similar cases sometimes. Uh, and with all of that, then to rule. Did the administrative law judge get it right or not? Did we get it right? And the appeals court will tell us. And again, the appeals court, that higher authority, uh, has ruled that in, during my tenure, 90% uh, of those cases appealed have been affirmed that the board got it right. Those couple of cases where we didn't get it right, we learn, we go on. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you. And I would just say, uh, finally, uh, Mr. Pro Tem, on our desk also today with two additional documents. Only one of the two, uh, a, a reference is actually included. I know on, I, I think it's camp, did it, am I the only one that was lucky enough to get these? They these. Oh, they delivered them to the offices. Okay, oh, they, they were to, delivered okay. to the I offices today. I didn't see the today. green one. Only one, um, much like um, the law currently requires for our campaign and political documentation, you have to say who paid for it and the source of. So only one, the green one, actually has a source. Um, this one, unless I'm missing it, does not tell us who compiled the information and who paid for it. And I just raise that as we talk about influence over the legislature, but I have to say, um, this, this whole diagram that shows, attempts to show a connecting to the legislature um, um, and the union and referencing contributions made to individual um, city members um, paints a very dangerous picture that as a city member of the legislature, I find troubling. Um, not only in a confirmation hearing, but this constant reference to a member introducing a bill to support one group 
and then the correlations to a contribution received from a third party um, is troubling to me, sir. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Mitchell. Um, Ms. Sharoma, let me ask you, I'm going to take a little, uh, uh, I'm going to deviate a little bit from the questions uh, uh, and commentaries from the members here today. And let me talk about, um, let me broach a subject with you with regards to um, the farm workers today, not the United Farm Workers, but the farm workers in general. Many of them are, are non-English uh, and a good percentage that's growing uh, non-Spanish uh, speakers, um, some who speak uh, uh, dialects or indigenous language, Mixteco, Triqui, este, Zapoteco, you know, whether they're from Oaxaca or other parts of, of, of the Republic or Mexico or elsewhere in, uh, in the Americas. Um, given the vulnerability of, of many farm workers, whether it's harassment, sexual discrimination of some sort, any other type of intimidation, just in general, not, not anything in specific, you know, nothing in, in specific uh, to, uh, I, I think, the grower that was mentioned uh, uh, quite frequently uh, today. Um, what are you guys at LRB doing with regards to your outreach to many of, of the workers so they, have, they understand what their rights are in California? with respect to the ALRB? So first of all, that language barrier is a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we recognize that uh, in hearings that involve farm workers who don't speak Spanish, uh, maybe as you say, Mixteco, Zapotec, uh, Triqui, and so forth, uh, that it's important for us to have translators, and, so, and we do. And what happens in those hearings is that uh, English to Spanish to the indigenous language, the indigenous language to Spanish to English. Uh, much patience is taken in, in uh, connecting those hearings. In terms of education and outreach, we did hear last fall through a series of uh, public hearings that this is uh, a serious um, uh, need uh, in terms of uh, workers uh, knowing their rights. Uh, and uh, this this is a challenge. Uh, so the um, board continues to um, support the general counsel's efforts. The general counsel staff is in the field uh, and, and out in the regions uh, as far as uh, providing uh, information, whether it's at uh, housing, uh, health fairs, what have you, but then also to look at uh, providing... Um, I, okay. It's harder to translate materials because there's not necessarily a written language or a written language that is understood uh, by some of the indigenous uh, farm worker groups. We do have a staff proposed regulation to uh, increase the opportunity for workers to uh, ask for uh, education uh, and um, uh, that is at least a first step. Well, let me ask you a question so I can, I can understand it, or maybe you can clarify better. So, so you, obviously you identified the problem, you know. Yeah. What, what are you doing at, at the LARB to provide a solution? Because obviously if the workers don't understand, know their rights, and if staff members, which I'm going to make the assumption at LRB, a lot of folks speak mostly, they're monolingual speakers, sure. English, uh, and not bilingual, um, and then in this case it's trilingual, you know, uh, or more than three languages, perhaps. Well, I, I understand the, 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 the challenge. What are you doing to change staff culture so staff either, I don't know if you're going to have staff members who are going to go learn a different language. I, I just don't know if that's in the cards. But if you, you hire folks, perhaps, uh, to work with you in, in terms of the outreach, that, that, that understand the various languages. Yes. So the, first of all is, in fact, to um, uh, uh, garner, uh, and it's, a, it's almost a word of mouth, to look at filling vacancies mm -hmm. uh, in the region where we can um, garner employees who speak some of the languages. Uh, some years ago, we were successful uh, in having one. It's only one person, and we do have a much greater need. Also, uh, I do want to give credit to uh, our chair, who is working to uh, put together um, I, I wouldn't, a, 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 um, a task team, force, a task, a, a, a group across that unit is, team. That is focused 
entirely and 100% on education, so that their sole focus is on education. Uh, and Has that team been put together? It has not yet been put together. Okay. Uh, I would say it's in the formulation stage. I'm, I'm hoping, I know he hopes that okay. we will have that done uh, fairly quickly. I, I would probably expedite that as quickly as possible because this is a large growing constituency uh, that you handle. This is your universe with regards to, yes, yes, sir. you know, uh, your constituents. And if you don't have a way to communicate with them, I'm not quite sure how you're going to be able to, you know, for those who are able to move forward or come forward, I'm not quite sure how you're going to be able to, uh, to deal with the most basic fundamentals of, of communication and, and extraction, if you will, of, of information or data necessary to adjudicate any other type of case that are before you and the other commissioners and Mr. Gould and, and others and your general counsel and so forth. So I, I, it's not specific to LARB. I, I know that's sort of pervasive among many agencies right now, especially with the changing demographics, that they're behind the curve. They're actually very, very slow. And doing the first and foremost, most important thing is usually less le left, you know, to the very end, which is sort of kind of, um, I never under kind of understood that, you know, it's what kind of approaches upside down, you know, and it's not just specifically you, but just sort of pervasive across the board in many agencies, especially dealing with constituencies that um, are um, uh, not as easily accessible because of the language barrier that exists. And, and obviously, those at the lowest economic strata, which are obviously the farm workers, it is much more challenging. But that, that means I think LRB has to be much more pro proactive and take the initiative because it's surely not going to come to you on the natural. So that means unless you move with initiative, you move with a sense of proactiveness and action, um, uh, uh, it's not going to come to you. It's just not. You know, and you guys are smart folks, lawyers, stand for lawyers, professors, yada, yada, yada. I mean, this is not rocket scientists. This is pretty simple stuff. Agree. Agree. Uh, and <clears throat> um, I did put in my letter to the Senate that um, uh, I would like to put more focus uh, on this. This was back on May 12th. Uh, and we saw the need. Uh, and layered on that as well uh, are the undocumented status uh, of workers, which makes them even more afraid to come forward. Uh, but our key thing is that we do um, educate uh, farm workers, supervisors, employers uh, on the act because the more that we can prevent violations of workers' rights, uh, the better. The, 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 the violation that is prevented will never know. Uh, uh, it makes it equally important uh, that uh, we, abs I have a commitment there in my letter, um, I uh, commit to you, uh, uh, Chairman, uh, of those efforts on my part. No, Ms. Shrum, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, your, your father was a farm worker. Yes, and he is here uh, today. Near Lodi, right? Oh, that's right. Lodi, a Campbell area, yes. Okay, that's... Mm -hmm. Uh, Anthony, it's near you, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Put in the central yeah. okay. In fact, <clears throat> uh, my dad was still pruning a grape vineyard in uh, uh, a camp, Ho Lodi, at uh, at age seventy. Now he's ninety now. <laughs> but um, he's still out there pruning, or he, he prunes right. my peach tree. Your peach tree, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, Acampo, Lodi. Acampo, gotcha, Acampo, gotcha. three okay. miles north of Lodi. Okay, yes. fantastic. So why don't we do this? Um, uh, uh, let's go to those who are going to testify in support mm -hmm. of Miss Sharoma. I'm going to say those who are going to testify in support. We'll get those who are in opposition, and we'll get those who may be agnostic across the board, but I'm just going to say those who are in support of Ms. Sharoma, I'm going to ask for brevity uh, from all individuals, whether you're supportive or you're in opposition. I'm going to ask for brevity para aquellas personas que quieren testificar eh, al respecto a la nomination de Geneva Sharoma, este, al respecto de la Junta o la Mesa este, de, de Trabajo Agrícola. Eh, les voy a pedir, por favor, que sean breves, eh, por favor. Aquellos que van a apoyar la candidatura de la señora Geneva Sharoma. Aquellos que se ponen a la candidatura, les voy a pedir, por favor, que sean breves. Vamos a comenzar para aquellas personas que son este, apoyantes, aquellos que apoyan 
La Senora Geneva uh, Sharoma. Those who are in support of Ms. Sharoma, come on up. Okay? Those who are in opposition, aquellos que se oponen, those who are in opposition. And I'm going to say, let me, let me underscore again, I'm going to ask for, I want to make sure you're heard, but I want to make sure, you know, uh, it, is, it is brief also to, por favor, este, eh, voy a empatizar y subrayar, no, por favor, que no sean largos, hay que ser muy breves, por favor. Adelante. Thank you. It's an article I discovered listing an ALRB employee, Jessica Arseniega, as a UFW organizer. Arseniega is still employed by the, UFW, by the ALRB. Now, as many of you know, Genevieve Sharoma has worked tirelessly to try and subvert the democratic, the democratic process in order to force farm workers into the UFW. The website Pick Justice has an extensive amount of information on this subject. Genevieve has also thrown her unwavering support behind Catherine Rivera Hernandez, the board member who is trying to fire me for what I know. Together, Genevieve and Catherine hold the majority vote in regards to the three-member board, giving them an unchecked power over any case that comes before the board itself. The two have been in cahoots for nearly a decade. By challenging Genevieve Sharoma's board confirmation, you will be making a powerful step in the direction of ending the corruption that stifles our democratic processes here in Sacramento. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next witness uh, in opposition. In opposition. Next witness in opposition. Come on up. Thank you for allowing me to speak here today. My name is uh, Jesse Rojas. I'm a farm worker rights activist from the Central Valley. I will be very short, sure. respectful to the time. I just have a few points to, uh, to mention. Um, I would like to ask, you know, I hear a lot about unions, growers, employers, but I'd like to talk to you from a different side. I think the most important side, uh, which is the reason why the Agricultural Labor Relations Board was originally established, and I believe those are the workers, the people out there that are picking the fruit and the vegetables that we all eat. I believe those are the most important ones. And, you know, some of them are here. I'm sure there's a lot of others that would have loved to attend this type of events, and they're unable to. Uh, my question to you, committee members, is how would you feel if in your election every two or four years, however that is, all the votes were thrown away instead of counted? Uh, that's what's happening to these thousands of workers in the Central Valley. Votes equaling all the votes in, for example, Montclair or Bloomington in Senator Leva's district, or Westmont in Senator Mitchell's district, Genevieve Sharoma wants those votes to be destroyed. Let me talk to you about thousands. I want to focus on the word thousands of workers. These thousands of workers in the Central Valley, particularly Garawan Farming, you know, they employ over 3,000 workers, and I think we mentioned this company, this workers, a lot during this meeting. They've had the largest protests in California agricultural labor history, the largest ones by far. You cannot deny that. Simply go to the, you know, our website, pickjustice.com. You go to YouTube, you put Garawan, you put uh, UFW. You'll find hundreds of videos that show that. They've taken them themselves. The media has shown it over and over again. They protested multiple times outside of the Visalia ALRB office, multiple times at the courthouse while the ALRB was inside trying to force a fake contract on the workers without letting them choose. Okay, Ms. Ms. Rojas, I'm gonna, I want to... I wanna... Make sure you get your perspective across, but I need you to sort of condense and synthesize. It's clear that you're in opposition to Ms. Sharoma. Um, I, I don't want you to give, give us a full narrative. I think we understand the dynamic with regards to uh, the, the, um, uh, the controversy, if you will, of, of the election, whether once for it or against it. Just get down to your basic okay, points Okay, I'll right cut down now. some of my yeah, points yeah, that I think yeah. are important to mention. Yeah. I know a lot of these, you probably know it, but Thank I think you. it's important from them. As you know, the, the, the language barrier, right? I'd sure. like to get it across in English. So these aren't fake employees like when you see from the UFW. Uh, the majority petition for this decertification. The ALRB ran the election, approved the election, but they refused to count the ballots, which is their fundamental right, like Senator Mitchell mentioned earlier about something else. Uh, now we know why Genevieve Sharoma does not want the employees the right to have a choice. 
how can someone who has such a close relationship with the key representative of the UFW be allowed to decide on UFW issues? I cannot comprehend that. And it amazes me, I come from Mexico myself. I came here when I was 11 years old. I was born in Colima, Mexico, and I see a lot of those issues that my family ran away from. And it's, it's sad for me to see that here in the state in America, the, the, the country of opportunity and freedom. Everyone knows why the ALRB doesn't want to count the votes. They know they lost. They know the employees do not want the UFW. And I'm not talking about a small minority of employees. I'm saying probably about 90% of the employees do not want the UFW. ALRB knows it, the UFW knows it, Richie, Rose, no, Richie Ross knows it, and Genevieve Sharma knows it. So these employees want you, committee members, to protect them against the ALRB. Right. The point of the ALRB is for them to be protected. Okay. They don't feel like that. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you where you have to wind down because we had a lot of folks right here uh, behind you, okay, Mr. Rojas? So and the last, thing I wanna say, the last thing I would like to say is please replace Genevieve Sharma with someone who will actually protect them. And lastly, it takes a lot of courage for them to be here since the last time they came to Sacramento, the ALRB retaliated against them. So I just want to applaud them for taking the courage to actually come here. It's not easy to go unpaid, find a babysitter like Mrs. Hernandez back there, sure. take care of her daughter. They're not paid to come up here. I think it's good to applaud them to be involved in the political process and in the process that affects them. Absolutely. So I urge you to Thank replace you. her. Thank you, Mr. Rojas. Next witness uh, in opposition. Next witness in opposition. I'm going to defer to the workers in case we run out of time. Okay, fantastic. Uh, All right, then let's have the workers. Thank you very much. If you don't mind, Senator De Leon, I'll do 30 seconds each and I'll translate, or you wanted them to just say it in Spanish. Uh, it's up to you. The, let me ask I'll, I'll uh, for the members. Seconds. What's the member's pleasure? Translation? Okay. Well, if, you can't. Yeah, she won't be able to take it down. They can say, but if the members do want to hear the translation, but I, be mindful, do not add, you know, anything else Spanish, because I know. You'll be able you know, to know, yeah, right? I know, yeah, yeah. Mi nombre es José García y yo estoy en contra de Chiroma porque todo este tiempo que hemos estado haciendo protestas en grande, siempre se nos ha negado la ayuda de ellos. Se ha mirado mucha corrupción de parte de, su, de labores agrícolas y siempre nos sentimos intimidados porque siempre cuando comenzamos las protestas no nos atendían. Nos sentimos humillados y discriminados porque de primero cuando comenzamos no nos hacían caso. Y ahora que todo el tiempo dicen ellos que somos unos ignorantes por pelear nuestros derechos. Muchas gracias. Ahí está, gracias. You don't need me to translate, right? Yeah, you know, colleagues, you understand, understand right? right now. The, the essence is because if we, we do... Uh, we make sure everyone's heard. It's going to be double translation, and it's just double the time. Okay. So I'm let you guys know. I'm telling to do it fast. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Rolando Padilla. Yo estoy aquí porque estoy en contra de la señora Chiroma, porque en primer lugar no quiere contar nuestros votos. Sentimos que está a favor más de la UFW que de nosotros, y nosotros somos los trabajadores del campo, que le echamos ganas. No queremos que se nos quiten el 3% para nada. Entonces ella no no nos ha hecho nada de de apoyo, nada. Queremos que la la cambien o no la queremos. Que esté en frente de la voz de okay, gracias. Muchas gracias, gracias. Uh, next we, we witness in support. I'd kind of like to know what they're saying. Okay, well, uh, we'll can have, we'll can have a, we'll get a summary. Is, right. you know, I'll, I'll give you that summary, you know. Sí, yeah. buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Virginia Chaires. Este, aquí vengo delante de la señora Chiroma. Una vez yo tuve una plática con ella, donde ella me dijo que yo tenía mis derechos para defenderlos. Si yo quería unión, iba a entrar a la unión. No se van a dar votación. Hicimos las votaciones. Ellos no han hecho nada. Ahora yo le traigo este contrato. Este es un contrato que, que ella nos quería imponer. Nos quiere imponer la, la unión. Aquí hay discriminación. Quiero que me diga ella por qué vamos a, a discriminar. Estamos en un país que no es discriminación. Nosotros somos trabajadores realmente legales. Yo tengo siete años trabajando en esa compañía y no he visto ahí ninguna... ninguna Mal, mal en mi en mi contra. Hemos peleado mucho con la ley laboral, con la unión, no nos han hecho caso. Yo creo que la señora Chiroma es una incapa es incompetente y es ha sido incapaz de resolver nuestro problema porque ya van como más de tres años que hemos estado peleando y luchas y luchas y luchas y no ha hecho nada por nosotros. Sí, gracias, gracias señora. Adelante, por favor, gracias. Eh, yo me llamo Ana. Yo lo que quiero es que cuenten los votos de los trabajadores que trabajamos ahí en Guerra, 
porque creo que a nadie se nos ha obligado a trabajar ahí, todos trabajamos ahí porque nos gusta trabajar ahí, y este y pues hubo una votación que hasta ahorita, bueno, desde el día de la votación, un miembro de ahí de la ley laboral cuando votamos dijo, van a, van a votar, pero sus votos no van a ser contados, no los dijo desde, o sea, lo dijo desde ese momento. Entonces digo, que se supone que ellos están para, la ley laboral está para apoyarnos. Entonces, ¿por qué no lo han hecho? Yo lo que quiero es que los votos se cuenten okay. y que nos den el derecho a elegir lo que queremos. Muchas gracias, gracias. señor. Gracias. Adelante. Uh, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es buenas Miguel tardes. Sánchez. Vengo a, acá a ver de encontrar a la señora Chiroma. Eh, lo mismo de mis compañeros. Estoy trabajando en la compañía desde el 2002. Siempre hemos querido apoyo. Eh, nos sentimos defraudados en eh, parte de la del Consejo Laboral. Estuve en el 2015, septiembre 9, fuimos a una sesión en un hotel que estaba la Unión de Campesinos, la, la, la ley laboral, y le dijeron al de seguridad que los de camisetas azules no los dejaran entrar nada más los de camisetas rojas. Entonces, ahí que nos da a pensar que no tenemos el apoyo necesario. Esa es una. Otra de las cosas, no sé por qué no quieren abrir los votos. Pienso que nosotros somos libres de elegir si queremos una unión o no que nos represente que no sé qué es el temor o por qué no quieren. Dijeron que iba a haber votación, se hizo la votación, los votos no, no, se, no, no se han contado. Entonces, venimos, a, o sea, estamos en contra de ella por muchas okay. cosas que nos sentimos defraudados. Bueno, gracias, muchas gracias. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Santos Casada. Yo vengo a oponerme de la señora Shiroma, que hagan un cambio por ella, por favor, porque no nos está ayudando para nada. Ok, gracias. gracias. Muchas gracias. If I may something, add something real quick on the record. Uh, what I'll do is I'll let you, I'll seconds. give you 30 seconds to, uh, you, there's a lot of adjectives there, obviously, so I'll give you 30 seconds to surmise. Okay. Uh, so, so, I just want to add on the record, yes. Senator Leva mentioned earlier, uh, working men and women, these are working men and women. I invite and urge all of you committee members, all you senators, to come down to the fields and visit the thousands of workers. I know one of you mentioned that, but please come and visit them. That's the only way to truly find out. Uh, you have? Oh, no, but I invite you to visit these workers, the 3,000 plus workers in the Central Valley. Well, they have their own issue. They, their votes haven't been counted. Okay, hold on, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. I don't want a colloquy happening right here, number one. I need you to pass the microphone now, right now. Let's go. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Rojas. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, wait, wait a second. You said you were going to give up your I was time. Going to defer because we had time, and I wanted to stop. I, well, I wanted we'll to go through the, the okay, the end let's go, let's do the jump very quickly. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, Matthew Allen with Western Growers Association. We're respectfully, respectfully opposed to the confirmation. Is the mic on or off? Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Matthew Allen, Western Growers Association. We're respectfully, respectfully opposed to the confirmation. Okay. Next witness. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Louis Brown, on behalf of California Fresh Fruit Association, Nisei Farmers League, and California Citrus Mutual, in opposition to the confirmation today. Thank you. Okay, last witness uh, in opposition. I will be brief, sir. I apologize. Sorry, My name is Anthony Romando. I'm the attorney for the decertification no, petitioner, Sylvia Lopez. I apologize for the late submission of my letter. Ms. Lopez contacted me late last week. Uh, she's actually in the hospital today. She didn't realize that a surgery conflicted with this date, so she asked me to make a submission on her behalf, which I received that on Friday. So I apologize at the lateness of the submission. Um, I simply was hoping to be heard. And you know, I'm ordinarily an advocate. I'm a little more comfortable in a courtroom than I am in this setting. So I, I apologize if I'm a little bit um, clumsy at this. The only points that I would like to make are with reference to the uh, Department of Finance audit. These were very serious structural and record keeping problems going on internally within the board. During a time when Ms. Sharoma, as she acknowledges, was in a management position. She has responsibility for these failures of record keeping. In any organization, private or public, financial and utiliza resource utilization data is essential to the evaluation of the success of the mission and the utilization of resources that are resources that belong to the public in this case. What the Department of Finance found in that audit was that 28 of 53 ALRB employees were not recording their time and their activities within an internal tracking system. That failure included Ms. Sharoma. It included the chairperson and the members of the board in failing to track their own activities that makes them accountable to the taxpayers, the taxpayers that they serve, and I assert to you, the farm workers that they serve. 
So there's a job performance issue here that internally this agency has administratively failed to maintain basic record keeping processes that are essential to be able, for them to be able to be evaluated, whether it's by the finance department or by this committee, data was missing today. Um, lastly, you, with respect, wrap it up. Okay. La, I'm ahead. wrapping up right now. Right. Lastly, with respect to the issue of, of Ms. Shiroma's in, entanglements with Mr. Ross, I do tend to agree with you that like-minded people find each other. You may have seen the article that focused on Mr. Ross's teaching at Sacramento State. It was about a month and a half ago. He bragged about how he teaches his students that in his class, cheating is okay because he's teaching about lobbying. Like-minded people do find each other. There is a problem in this agency. It is an agency that is in turmoil. It can't account for its activities. It can't account for how it spends money. It spends $200,000 or more a year on temporary positions that are allotted a $10,000 budget. This is a management failure that beyond all of the turmoil that surrounds this growing case and my involvement in it, I don't want to waste your time advocating for my client's position. What I ask you to do is look at the administrative functions of this agency and read that audit and ask yourself, is this the type of leadership that should continue with this type of fiscal mismanagement and internal unaccountability and failure of record keeping. Thank you. Thank I you. Thank you, Mr. Armando. Any other folks in opposition? <clears throat>